Charisma Quotient. I'm your host, Kim Seltzer, a dating and makeover expert, where I will help you build confidence, make connections, and find love from the outside in. Do you hate dating and find it exhausting? I mean, do you wish you could just skip the dating and just get to having the boyfriend or the committed relationship? Or maybe you don't even know how to date. A lot of times, you know, people are shy and you become anxious just thinking about meeting strange men. But for whatever reason, if you are like a lot of women, you might prefer being in a relationship rather than meeting a bunch of men, which saps your energy. But the truth is, is that there are a lot of different stages in dating and all are important and necessary in attracting a great partner. And if you haven't heard the earlier podcast that I did on the phases of dating, I encourage you to go back and listen to that so you know what I'm talking about. And the biggest mistakes I see women make is that they tend to be more relationship-oriented when they date. And if you are a relationship person and you're dating like one in the courting phase, you might be getting too attached to the outcome, which ends up being too serious and it's too much. And you start thinking about the person in front of you within 30 seconds, how can he be my boyfriend? (laughs) Or if you don't have any dating experience at all, you may not understand the fundamental rules to dating, period. I want to share a story with you about a woman I worked with who never really dated. I mean, she always had long-term boyfriends, and she hopped from one boyfriend to the next, and she just didn't learn how to date without getting too serious. And so when we spoke, she really wanted my help in finding her soulmate. I mean, that's how she came to me, you know, find me my next relationship, basically. And she loved being in relationships, and she absolutely hated the thought of dating. When I explored with her what was hard about dating, she disclosed that she felt it was exhausting. She just thought it was like game playing and that she honestly didn't even know how. The problem was that she was attracting lopsided and unhealthy relationships because she would fall into the vortex of the relationship right away. And then she would end up losing herself in the process, only to end up feeling unheard, like the men really didn't know who she was or what she wanted. And we talked about how she was the common denominator. Obviously, we couldn't change the guys, but there were things that she could do. And it was because of the way she was dating or not dating for that matter. I asked her what it would be like to date multiple men without getting attached and to just have fun. And she admitted, and she was almost feeling guilty as she was saying it out loud, she said that it actually felt like that would be really good for her, but she didn't know how. And she also didn't know where to meet the men. And I said to her, I want to teach you how to date smarter, not harder, and not lose yourself in these unhealthy relationships. So that's what we did. And I put together a plan for her. And a year later, she ended up in a wonderful partnership. And what I taught her is what I want to walk you through today so that you can learn how to date and date without getting attached and have fun doing it. This is crucial for you if you are frustrated with unhealthy relationship patterns, unhealthy men, and really want to change it. This is crucial for you if you are just coming out of a long-term relationship and you're getting back out there. This is crucial for you if you want to learn just how to date. And this is all important because when you learn how to date right, you're going to attract a positive and fulfilling relationship. But I know what you're thinking. You're like, Kim, I don't want to just date around. I'm not that kind of person. I'm, you know, I just feel almost sleazy having sex with a bunch of guys and I don't want to waste time. All right. First of all, you don't have to have sex with a bunch of guys. That's not even what dating is about. And actually, you are wasting more time getting sucked into relationships that don't work and not serving you and not understanding who you are or demanding more for yourself. 
Because once you learn this, you can learn how to date without attachment, have fun doing it. And I want to walk you through now these five steps to successful dating. Okay. Number one, really get clear on what your mission is. You know, I talked about this before. I encourage all of you to write down your mission statement when it comes to dating, just like you would in business, right? What is it that you really want? Get clarity around that because I think there's just so much noise out there and we can also get caught up with what other people want rather than what you really want. There was this woman um, I was working with recently and, and she was actually a widow And, you know, she finally kind of got through the whole grieving period and she really was ready. I think it's been about two years now. And she's like, yeah, I want to start dating again. And I I want that next relationship. And she was like telling me just the endless list of all the qualifications that she wants her guy to be. And she was looking for that soulmate again. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Let's slow down for a second. I like... I, you know, she had been married to this man for 30 years. Okay. So she, you know, and even before that, she said she didn't have much dating experience. So I kind of called her out on like her mission. I said, let, you know, I get that that could be your long term goal, that soulmate, you know, what you're looking for. I think it's fantastic. But the last time I checked, you haven't dated for like actually 40 years, if, if, if that. And she just paused and she thought about it. She's like, wow, you're right. I I guess I didn't really think about it. I mean, she was just so busy trying to get to the next thing that she she didn't take time to clarify what it is, not only that she needed, but that she wanted. And so once we wrote down her mission, it, it also became a lot easier to know that, okay, well, the, in the next three months... I want to just date a bunch of men and not get into a relationship. And we and we even mapped out a plan on how she was going to do that. So in your mission statement, it's really important to be as specific as possible. Like how many dates do you want during the week? What do those dates look like? Where are you going to meet these men? And what is the outcome that you're trying to achieve? And once you get clarity on that, then it's time to go out there and start doing it. So then step number two is putting together a solid dating plan. This is what I help people with all the time. Like a business plan outline, you're going to outline where to go how to approach meeting the opposite sex. You know, when clients come to me with feelings of discontent and frustration around dating, I help them develop a dating plan so that they get out of their rut and infuse more positive energy and create opportunities to meet several potential mates. So you want to look at your activities, your social circle, like do you have a good set of wing gals that you're going out with to have some organic interaction with men? Are you taking some classes? Then you can even start entertaining going online and looking at the various sites that you want to use. Like you need to start just getting traction. I always tell people, you know, don't worry about like the qualifications the man. Right now, just map out a plan on how you're going to do it. Because most likely if you're after the age of 20, the infrastructure of college you know, which is like built-in social life, is gone. And the older you get, the harder it becomes because life happens, people start being in different places, a lot of people get married, move away, you might be in a different location. So you have to build that for yourself. You have to take action. It's not just going to happen on your own. You have to date almost as if you are networking for a job. Like if you were out of a job, what would you do? You would start making a list of, you know, people you know, perhaps, that might know of jobs. You might start getting out there and meeting people. You might start applying for jobs online. Take what you know about business and apply it to date. However, (laughs) and I say this with a however, because all you business-minded and successful women, I can hear you just saying, oh yeah, well, I'll just like get down to business and I'll start, you know, mapping this out. And 
that's great. What I'm telling you to do is to do that. But then once you start going on the date, I don't want you dating like a business person. Okay. So that, that's, that's going to be the harder part for you. So we'll address that in a second. All right. So that's number two. Just put together a solid dating plan because I get this all the time. You know, people are like, Kim, where are all the good men? I don't see the good men. And I, uh, I, if I had literally a dollar for every time I heard that, I would be a very wealthy woman. Um, anyway, so if you do that, you also will be empowering yourself to take action and you will get results. I promise you. It's a numbers game at this point. All right. Step number three is once you start getting traction and you're out on these dates, be honest, okay? If you are just dating and you're not in this relationship mode, right? We're just learning how to date without attachment. Don't feel bad about meeting different people. In fact, the guy, or if you're a guy listening to this, the woman is most likely dating around too, This is a normal part of the courting phase and relationship oriented people have a hard time like understanding that and there's a lot of guilt that gets attached to it. Many of my women clients state that they feel guilty for dating more than one man at a time. Is that you? If that's you, you have to take a look at that. There's nothing wrong with what you're doing as long as you're honest about where you're at and true to yourself, then that person's going to respect it. In fact, not being hyper-focused on one man or one person creates a very kind of sexy, fun challenge sometimes, which will make the man want you even more. It's, it's almost like you're not, you know, you're letting go of that anxiety of latching on and, and seeing if this is like, you know, your potential boyfriend. And when, when you relax and you let that go... Actually, that's when magic really starts happening. So if this is something that you're grappling with, you know you get attached, it's essential to do this and just be upfront with the guy. You can say, look, you know, I'm not looking for a relationship right now. I'm just looking to meet lots of people and have fun and actually learn some things about myself. I mean, you can be totally honest. And that's that vulnerability that's also really attractive to a person. And as long as you're doing that and he's cool with that or she's cool with that, then perfect. That's somebody that you can maybe just have some fun with and casually date until it turns into something or if you're ready for something more. Okay. So that's step number three. Step number four Okay, I know I harp on this, but it's it's crucial. Let go of the list, ladies. And, and this is mostly ladies that I'm addressing in this one. Unfortunately, many women focus too much on the end result of the relationship rather than just being present and enjoying getting to know someone. In fact, if there's a you know, there's a tendency to have this like list that scrolls out 10 feet long of all the qualities a man must be. And I've talked about this before. A lot of times this is our hurt list, right? So it's a way to protect ourselves from getting hurt again. So you want to make sure that the next person has the other qualities. But in this case, you might be spending wasteful energy constantly checking off the list And in the end, decide that no one's ever going to be good enough or really fulfill your requirements. So therefore, you end up hypothesizing there are no good men out there because there's too much emphasis on completing the checklist during a date. It becomes a Q&A interview. And this is what I was saying in the beginning. So after you're mapping out your dating plan, I don't want you going in on the date like an interview. And if you do that, because, you know, you you might dismiss them as boring, not right for you. Ladies, let go. Just let go of the list. Be in the moment and see if you have chemistry. There is plenty of time, plenty of time to get to know someone. Uh, There's um, a woman that I worked with. And in, in this case, she had no dating experience, hardly at all. And in the dating, little dating experience that she had, she was really attracting some unhealthy situations for sure. But it never got to the point where it really became more intimate and deep. 
And I, you know, I was coaching with her and because she had little dating experience, she was really getting caught up in the physicality of a guy. And so if he wasn't really, really cute and had all these like, you know, things that she's looking for and, and, you know, it was almost like I was listening to, you know, Cinderella listing out Prince Charming's qualification. (laughs) And, and And I said to her, I said, look, you're dating like you're in a PhD program, like you have, like you've gone through schooling and you're in this like higher schooling and and now, you know, but the problem, you're still in grammar school and she just got it because she was an academic and it was like the first time she really got it. She's like, oh, I'm like, look, when you have enough experience under your belt and you learn how to date, then you can come to me with a little bit more of a list. But until then, you just need to get experience. Otherwise, you're just listing a list from a fairy tale. And it wasn't her fault because, you know, time had gone by and she didn't have that dating experience. It was no wonder she was getting caught up in the looks because it was almost like she was an adolescent. You know, you, you think of how you were, you know, in high school. And if you dated when you were younger, you looks were really important and you you would get caught up in that. But then, you know, as she started gaining experience, this is just a beautiful um, story that just happened. I just learned like last week that she is in a like a relationship right now. She has a boyfriend and she can't even believe it. She's like, I, I can't believe this stuff really works, <laughs> you know, because she did. She just started dating and she, you know, learned a lot about herself, learned a lot about men. And because she paced things out, she landed this great guy and he sounds fantastic. So I can't wait to hear how that goes. But let go of the list. When you let go of the list, a lot of magic happens. And then finally, tip number five, you know, I'm going to say this flirt. Ladies, flirt. Remember the definition of flirting. It is to behave as though you are attracted to someone without the serious intention of an outcome. That last part, without the serious intention of an outcome, is the most important. Do not get attached. Your purpose, your sole purpose as you are going out there and dating is to create a magnetism that just draws people to you, to create a curiosity where you go in on a date and just say, hmm, I wonder what I can learn from this guy and be playful and have fun. And, you know, if I don't like him, maybe there's just something I can get from this date. You know, maybe he takes you to a restaurant that you just never learned about before and you go back and you meet the guy because of that. You know, when you go back to the restaurant, there's so much magic that happens when you let go of the outcome. You really stay present and just flirt and have fun. Enjoy receiving, enjoy getting dressed up and feeling feminine and getting compliments from a man. I mean, that there's nothing like that. I, and I shared this in a podcast where I, I remember that first feeling I had when I really started putting intention into my dating wardrobe. And yes, I did wear that red dress, I think, on one of my dates. But then I, you know, got savvy and got some other dating clothes. I enjoyed, you know, that the men actually enjoyed me. I know that sounds kind of strange, but I don't think I ever embraced that before. So embrace that, that attention, you know, that admiration, the compliments. And if, if you're somebody that's not used to that, even more so. And that's what also dating can be about. It's about getting comfortable with the opposite sex, finding you attractive and helping you with your sexy confidence. Um, There's another woman that I'm working with and she's a nurse and she's so used to always giving, 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 never receiving. And of course, did not have some you know, healthy relationships. Now she's divorced and had been a while. And what she was doing is just putting all these guys in a friend zone. Like she just, you know, she was too scared to even, you know, entertain flirting and and dating lightly and all of that. A relationship oriented person for sure. 
but she is now doing it. I mean, she's really like, she got some new clothes. She's lost weight. She's enjoying different men and she's enjoying the attention she's receiving. And she can't believe it. Like she, at first she almost felt guilty, but now she's learning how important it is because again, when you love you, men will too. So hopefully that was helpful. Just to review, you're first going to get your mission statement down, get clarity on what it is you want. Second, you're going to put together a solid dating plan. Then once you start getting traction, I want you to be honest with these guys and just, you know, say you're not looking for a relationship. You're just really learning how to date and meet lots of people. Fourth, you're going to let go of the list and finally flirt. Okay. And those, I mean, obviously there's more steps to it. And I encourage anyone to hop on the phone with me and see where you're at so I can help you progress and things. But I think if you start with these fundamental steps, you will start seeing a difference in the way you date without attachment and have fun doing it. Okay. So I have a great letter that was um, written to me that pertains to exactly what we're talking about today. She said, hi, Kim. I would like to have a healthy, happy dating life. I've been separated for 16 months and the divorce I expected to be final in a month. I am just starting to date again. Literally, I have been out on one date and I can already feel the stress, the anxiety and frustration building. I need a reboot on how to date and have fun. I have done a lot of work on myself. I've gone through a lot of therapy. And I know that there are relationship patterns that are a result of codependency. I felt comfortable that I had worked through all of this. But now that I start dating again, I can feel the same patterns emerge. My goal is to date being authentically me, no shape shifting. I can tell this is a listener. <laughs> and without sacrificing my self care, Lindsay. Oh gosh, Lindsay, I so feel where you are at. And I have so been there. I just remember that feeling after getting out of the divorce and just at the tail end of it, I was in such a fog. And I remember really like craving that male attention and energy and having that secret desire to get out there, but I also was scared. So dating after divorce can be scary. It's daunting, but exciting at the same time. But here's the thing. It is really new for you. My God, you're not even divorced yet. I mean, you're still separated, so you're still finalizing the divorce. Take a deep breath. The fact that you are still going through the stress of divorce, and even though mentally you might be divorced in your mind, emotionally you're still going through it. And until you know there's finality and there's time that have passed, you're still in the muck of it. And coupled with the fact that you have the tendency to get attached in relationship signals to me that you need to slow the F down (laughs) with your expectations around dating. So number one, going back to what I said, you really have to take a look at your mission statement. What is it that you really should be setting out to do? And remember, chunk it down. I know that in the end, you'd like to find a beautiful relationship again. That's not you know, the point. You'll get there. You have to slow down in order to achieve that. So I would say, take a look at the next three months and what is it that you are trying to accomplish in the next three months? It might be, and I would actually highly recommend, especially if you were under my watch, that um, dating, I don't even think is really a good thing for you right now. But instead, I would replace with the word dating being social around male energy. I mean, you know, what if you were to just build your new social life with single friends? I mean, most likely you might be having a lot of, you know, married friends. If you're a mom, you might be hanging out with a lot of families and other, you know, moms who are married. And that, you know, no offense, that's just not sexy. Like you need to find some good wing gals. So I would really focus on getting involved in some fun things and just start learning who you are separate from a man. Number two, I would do like a self-check, like self-assessment and ask yourself these questions. Are you okay being alone? Are you okay being alone? Because until you are able to be alone is when you will actually be ready to be with someone else. Does that make sense? 
When you are okay being alone, you will be okay being with someone else. Because then, and only then, you won't be dependent on someone else to fill the void, to fill the validation up, to fill that love. You need to love yourself first. So focus on what, you know, ask yourself this, what do you love about yourself? What is it that you offer? What are you good at? What are your hobbies that you could get involved in to fill yourself up? You do you. Fill yourself up first. Okay. I can't emphasize that enough. It's so crucial in this journey with everybody who's listening to this. And then finally, start slowly entertaining, you know, introducing some light social dates. I'm just going to kind of call it social dates because I think just, you know, getting used to what it's like to be taken out and laughing with some men and feeling flirty and just, you know, having that experience, but make a pact for yourself that you won't get into a relationship right now. Do not get sucked into that vortex. And if you think that that's going to be too hard for you, then that means you're not ready for it. And I would encourage you to start reading some books on attachment in relationships. There's great books out there and resources that will really help you. Because you deserve, you deserve to have a healthy relationship and one where you don't get sucked in and lose yourself in the process. So all of you, all of you can learn how to date without being attached and have fun doing it. I know it's possible. I've seen it. I breathed it. (laughs) And you can do it too. So As always, thanks for joining me today. This has been the Charisma Quotient, and I'm your host, of course, Kim Seltzer. And remember, you can build confidence, make connections, and find love from the outside in. And make sure you go to my website, seltzerstyle.com, for all the different ways I can help you, including my new Love Makeover Boot Camp, combining a four-day luxury retreat in Florida Oh my God, I can't wait for this because I, I just saw the sales page for my boot camp and you have to take a look at this place. They actually call it the Pink Palace because it's just gorgeous. And we're going to be doing so many fun things, you know, from flirting to man scavenger hunt to shopping to some, you know, inner work and confidence building type exercises. So it's going to be really jam packed with a lot of impact. And then I'm doing a group coaching course afterwards to keep it all going. So it has sticking power to really transform your love life inside and out. So click the link you'll see in the show description if you want more information and you can schedule a call with me to see if it's a good fit. And until then, stay tuned until next week with more tips on how to feel and look fabulous every day.